Calabunga Corner, and this episode we are sitting here with Mark, and Mark is Leonardo from Ninja Turtles 2 and 3. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's my pleasure. Now, you've done a lot of different things in your history. Uh, you started off doing um, uh, gymnastics type stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, I was on the U.S. gymnastic team for many years, and uh, uh, I went to UCLA, and I was uh, on the UCLA team and national champion. We were, I was the captain of the team in 1984, and I was on the U.S. team and competed all over the world for gymnastics representing the United States. And that's why I probably was selected to be Leonardo because of my acrobatic abilities and, and my gymnastics abilities. So yeah, I, gymnastics was, uh, was my whole life, you know, that's, that's what I live to do and that's what I, uh, I really, that's what my dreams were to be, uh, you know, Olympic gymnast. So what inspired you to go into that route with your life with uh, gymnastics? Gymnastics? Yes. Um, probably had to do with, I, I loved, I loved trampoline, I loved flying through the air, I loved, uh, you know, I guess when I was a little kid, I, I used to wish I could fly, like, and I have flying dreams. I have dreams that I'm actually flying around. I don't know if that's healthy or not, but <laughs> <laughs> sounds fun. Though. But but I have those dreams, and uh, and uh, so it's interesting um, when I'm in the air doing whatever. I'm I'm really. I, you know, I, I just love the feeling of flipping and twisting and whatever through the air. And uh, it's funny because I used to go in the, when was it? Was it the 80s or the, it was in the 80s, I think. I'd go down to, drive down to Las Vegas. And they had this uh, flyaway machine, this, this big, huge uh, air cylinder that had a DC-9 prop, uh, propeller on the, on the bottom and you jump into an airstream and you just start flying around and uh, uh, I was a, a retired from gymnastics so I was really good at uh, flipping. The guys were like, we'll just run the machine, you teach us how to flip, you go in there. And we... So They got it at Universal City World yeah, now. I know they do now. <laughs> yeah. And it's great. I've been on that one too. It's a, it's a blast. So, so anyway, after I did it the first time, you know, I couldn't sleep that and I was like, I actually got to fly, so yeah. That's really cool. So that's where it all ties together, just my <laughs> wish to fly. Now you were seriously injured though yeah. doing all this. Yeah, yeah, I broke my neck, I broke my fifth and sixth cervical vertebrae. Um, training in 1980, I was, uh, had qualified for the first U.S. Olympic trials and I was just training and uh, I was tired in practice. I was putting together a, a new trick at the time and uh, just got tired in practice and uh, landed on my head. Snapped my fifth and sixth cervical and I um, had some temporary paralysis and it was a really scary uh, time of my life and, um, and I, my dream of wanting to be Olympic gymnast that was not looking good the, uh, all the doctors at UCLA and the head neurosurgeon person said that I should probably think of something else to do. And, uh, but there was a great surgeon at UCLA, his name was uh, Dr. Gerald Fireman, and he actually was the sports doctor for UCLA men's athletics. He takes care of the football guys, the basketball guys, everybody does. He did, had done surgeries with everybody, and he was the main doctor. And he said, uh, we fuse you back together. I think you can do it. I think it, you know, it'd be okay. Now it'd be a little more dangerous for you, but you know, we'll do a good fusion and we'll see how it goes. And that's what we did. We did a, he did a, with the surgery on me and fused my vertebrae back together. And, and, uh, and it went step at a time, one small step at a time, and, and then I was able to get back into gymnastics, and I actually made the U.S. team again, and, and, and was able to see my 
career, my gymnastic career, completely through uh, to the finish, and I was better than I was before I broke my neck. So, wow. So I, I had a full recovery and some. So was there any uh, people that really stood out as support to help you through oh, that hard yeah. time? Yeah, all my teammates, you know, they, uh, they all were really supportive. It's been a rough road there, but you really recovered and you went on to do something nobody would have expected was going into the costumes. Now, how did you get into movies? Was Ninja Turtles your first movie, or did uh, you get into the entertainment business before I, that? I had done, you know, I had done uh, other stunts and things. Um, because of my gymnastic background, uh, there was always uh, someone looking for someone who could do a flip to do this or do that or whatever. And uh, so, you know, um, I was always getting contacted to, you know, can you help us out and do this and that. So, when I, when I graduated from UCLA, um, I, I went straight into doing, you know, stunt stuff. And um, so then I, someone called up and said, hey, you know, they're, you want to try out for this Ninja Turtle thing movie? And I, I said, okay, yeah, sure, give it a try. And uh, so I got the job. And uh, I was pretty excited about that. And, uh, and Did you know Ninja Turtles beforehand? Oh yeah, I mean, come on. <laughs> I mean, yeah. the, the first movie came yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, okay, absolutely. What was your first exposure to the turtles? Do you remember the cartoons? The cartoons. Yeah, I mean, that's everybody's, right? <laughs> the comics was well. The comics is uh, actually the first. Yeah. But I was exposed to by the the cartoons, seeing the cartoons. The first time you got went and tried out. Um, how did that go? Well, how was the tryouts? What all did they expect from you there? Uh, I think that they wanted to know if I could do some uh, some acrobatic skills, and I believe what I did was I did a standing backflip with a full twist in the in the office, and I said, "How's that?" And they went, <laughs> "Don't do that again, please." <laughs> We don't have any insurance in here. Don't do that again. I said, okay, don't worry. I won't. <laughs> Just let me know if you need to see any more. You know. So and then I, I did. I read the, the scenes with them, and, uh, and it was what they wanted to see. Uh, did you have previous costume experience, or did they? That was this your first costume? This was my first costume experience, and boy, wow. is that a, a tough one to <laughs> yeah. jump into. Uh, you were flown out to Henson's Creature Shop for your fitting in London? Yeah, yeah. And then they did a head cast and they did the entire thing at once. And they they built a frame to hold our arms out because, you know, how long can you stand out there and hold your arms out? You know, yes. When they're telling you to relax, you know, I mean, uh, uh, yeah. try holding your arms out for a minute, okay? And then relax. <laughs> Look, we need you to relax. Uh, okay, uh, that's a, kind of a tricky one. <laughs> so, uh, what was it like being at the Henson's Creature Shop? Are you kidding me? It was great. I mean, Henson's. Okay. Nice. Oh yeah. Were you a Muppets fan and all that beforehand too? Yeah. 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 I mean, I was. I just felt like it, this is so special. So special. I was so honored and so. You know, it was such a special thing to be there. So, yeah. That was really cool. Really, really cool. And then came actually wearing the, the suit with the animatronic head. How did that go over on your first day? You know, be, they did something special for me because of my neck injury. They uh, put a little extra bungee back there to counterbalance it, to, to cut some of the weight off of me. Um, so there was a special, uh, special thing that they kind of rigged for me to try to make that it That was nice of yeah, them. Yeah, that was really, you know, the thing about the Hensons is they look at you, they look at your needs, and they try to make it, you know, custom to you so that you can do what you need to do as best as you can. So they, they had rigged a thing for me with a bungee, and uh, it actually took a lot of the weight off because a lot of them, the animatronics were in the front and the mouth and the nose part of it, so it would constantly be pulling my head down. And this is the position that's hard for me. 
this is really easy for me. So if they had they had the bungee back there that counterbalanced it and it helped take some of the thing off, you know, just it made yeah. it uh, like a neutral thing. It made it a lot easier for me. But you know, the the funny thing was as as we the show went on and as we kept you know as time went on. Um, I didn't need it so much because it had built up a more of a strength uh, in my head. I mean, how often are you walking around with, I don't know how much the head weighs, an extra, you know. So many pounds. So many pounds on your head, you know. Over time, if I'm doing it like all day long, then maybe next week, I'm, my muscles are stronger. Yeah, it's you know? a new workout. Yeah, so it's a, you, it, you acclimate to it and that's what happened. And then I didn't need it at all anymore. So it was kind of like a, you know, it was It helped cool. strengthen your neck even yeah. more. Yeah, yeah. So I got stronger. <laughs> so what was your first day on the set like as a turtle? Uh, it, was, it was really, well, you know, it was North Carolina in the middle of the summer. So <laughs> hot. You know, like 104 degrees outside. And then guess what? Today we're going into a turtle suit and we're going to... You know, you're really going to sweat. So it was, you know, it was welcome to, welcome to the turtle land here. We are going to be in for a sauna like you've never met. So it was, it was tough. It was tough. But, I mean, really fun. I mean, really fun, but really uncomfortable. So, you know, it's a mixture of everything, you know. Now, with uh, doing the turtle movies, did you have any favorite scenes or bloopers that happened while working on the film? Um... Well, I mean, I really, we had a lot of fun with, uh, with uh, the donut scene, you know, to Toka and Razar. That was really fun. Um, we had, oh, there was one scene that I was, I was absolutely, excuse me, absolutely in shock that actually worked out. There was a scene where uh, we're, we know that the foot is out there, Splinter's got us hold up at and waiting inside with at uh, at April's place and there was a TV guide everyone's eating stuff and there's a TV guide magazine and I walk in and I uh, you know they're looking at the TV guide and I take the TV guide and I just toss it over my head and it flies behind me and lands perfectly on a table and full and ends up folded up perfectly it lands perfectly it's in the shot and it was like, you could never have planned that. And it was so perfect. Wow. And uh, uh, so there, it's this one scene and I was like, uh, wow, it, that, was, that was perfect. You could never have wished for that one. I mean, because we're blind. I mean, let's face it, we're blind. Yeah. Okay, so not only did I, you know, hit everything right, but threw it back there, <laughs> laid it on the table, and folded it up nice and neatly. Like, you know. Try doing that. Now I'm gonna have try to doing like, that on purpose. Yeah, you can't. I'm gonna have to watch that and see that from that little piece now. Yeah. That's an interesting tidbit that I've never really taken notice to before. Yeah, if you realize that we can't really see anything, try replicating that blind. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Give me a shot on that. And then you know the whole uh, all the acrobatic stuff. You know all the flips and stuff. I did all my obviously did a. You know, there was no stunt doubles for all my flips. And, and I did them, I did some of mine with uh, the animatronic. I had the animatronic head. I was able to do some stuff with that. Wow. You also could ride a bike. Easily. You were yeah. the only turtle, according to a magazine, that could. Yeah, so. I could. I was uh, very, uh, very coordinated. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Now, with uh, the turtle movies, there was a lot of cutscenes in all the movies. Did, did, was there any scenes that you remember filming that you were disappointed to not make it into the film? Not really. I think that, you know, I understood what we what was going on. I, I, I think that for the flow of it, I think they, they, they their choices were right. I, I, I don't think that there were some scenes that I necessarily disagreed that shouldn't have been in there. I agree. Okay. Directors made the right choice. I believe so. You That's know, good. sometimes you can go out and and lag too much on something that's not really, you know, cut to the chase, you know. And Turtles 2 was 
spectacular with what, the way it was brought together I think so. Film. I think it was really, you know, it, I think it really well done. It was a little more, you know, the, the, the concept was uh, number one was was dark, wanted to keep it more dark, more, you know, um, and then number two gradually lets you see you them more. Got you a know, a little lighter. more lighter, a little more like coming out from the darkness behind the shadows a little bit more. Number three, way out there into, into sunlight. <laughs> you know, people. Michelangelo is falling in love. Okay. Yes. <laughs> With a human. <laughs> So. Well, it's not like there's a female turtle around right, for them. Right, so. right, right. <laughs> uh, now, speaking about Turtles 3, you went, you're the only one of the lead actors that went from Turtles 2 to Turtles 3. Right. Uh, was the costumes extremely different to wear or just different in appearance? Uh, the wearing was the same. The appearance was dramatically different. Um, are you asking my opinion? Okay. Feel free to. My opinion is the the costumes in number two were spot on, and number three were far from the mark. Yeah. And you're probably agreeing. Frog, frog face Leo. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, Leo and Don. I really felt they they brought the noses way out there on them both, and then uh, Raph and Mike were closer to what they should look like. Yeah. Uh, Mikey was the closest that I with his looks. Yeah. Uh, but Leo and Don were like, why do they have, as Raph says, beaks? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Raph actually says it. Uh, also in that movie, um, going over the script, because I have got to do that, I noticed a lot of uh, like Michelangelo's lines were switched up and given to Raph. Was there a lot of on-screen like changes to where you guys were noticing that with the script? Or was it just another revised script to where it went? As well, there you was saw a it? there was a lot of um, a lot of problems on the third on the third movie. Um, there was a lot of changes going on both in the script as well as you know um, first unit director, second unit director, um, not happy with the shots, um, people changing. Um, uh, you know, the, Terry, um, Terry Leonard was uh, supposed to be the second unit director and he's an amazing, um, you know, second unit director and he was let go and uh, then there was someone else that came in that did some, I can't remember who it was that took over after him, but there was a lot of, a lot of Things like that going on on number three wasn't yeah. the most happy environment. Well, that, that's sad to say because you guys had such a wonderful surroundings with Young River Astoria, Falls, yeah. Astoria, and Total is a wonderful place. Oh, it's magical. Yeah, it's going up there, the, the trees, the mountains. Cooler. Yeah. It wasn't so far up hot. How much harder was it to wear the samurai gear? Oh, that was really hard. That was that was heavy and bulky and constantly getting caught up and hung up in things and it was just really really uh, that was difficult. Now I was, was glad when we were done with them. <laughs> now were you guys was the gear actually put on over an actual costume? Yep. Or was it was? Yep. Oh wow. This was, was all extra on top of what we got. Wow. Yeah. I was wondering if they had a different costume where it was made into it to make it a little lighter on you. No. Oh, that's torture. <laughs> <laughs> that's torture. <laughs> that's torture. <laughs> and uh, a big question about the transferring from Turtles 2 to Turtles 3. Since you were the only actor that went from one to the other in the turtle suit, how did you get the job on the third turtle film? They just called me up and said, hey, you want to do it? I said, okay. Do I have to do a mold again? No, we're good. Oh, oh, even better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, these days, uh, you're in the toy business. Correct. So could you tell us a little bit about your company here? Or? 
Uh, yeah, uh, in 2000, uh, my wife and I um, opened up a toy truck company called Bruder. And uh, it's been a toy truck company that, uh, that's been manufacturing in Germany since 1926. So this did not exist in North America. And we brought this over and it's just been uh, skyrocketing. Um, as far as toy trucks on the, on the uh, specialty toy market, this is the most important brand that everybody wants. So ours are the coolest trucks. They're, because they're engineered and designed in Germany, everything has full realistic functions. Our fire truck will actually has a water pump and it will you can squirt water like 20 feet with it. Wow! Um, our garbage trucks will actually dump trash inside them and actually s compact and, and smash trash. Everything has realistic working functions. Our cement mixer, you can put sand in there when you spin the drum, the sand comes down the cement mixer chute. So, you know, every single one of our toys does all this amazing stuff, uh, but I mean we have licenses like Caterpillar and Mack trucks and uh, you know all this stuff is so, it's so, you know, that's the thing. How does my life tie together? Turtles, toys, toys, you know, kids, dealing with, you know, it's all, it's all Doing the same thing I always did. Touching everywhere of entertainment you can. Yeah. Bringing a lot of smiles to millions of people's faces. Yeah, and this is, uh, you know, this is amazing stuff. It's it's Bruder. It's, uh, and in German it means brother. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, and thank you guys for watching. We will catch you next time here at Calabunga Corner. Uh, could you take us out for with a Calabunga for the fans? <laughs> I'd rather you do it. Oh, Come that's on, a guest thing. Please do it. Okay. Please.